Welcome to Seeking Zen, a channel dedicated to guiding you on a path of self-discovery, inner peace, and spiritual growth. I'm your host Jason and in today's story, we delve into the fascinating life of one of the most influential figures in history, Buddha. You may think you know everything about him, but did you know that he almost destroyed himself in his quest for enlightenment? Yes, that's right, Buddha made a huge mistake that nearly cost him his life and his happiness. But he also learned a valuable lesson that changed his perspective and his destiny. In this video, I'm going to reveal the dark side of Buddha's journey, how he overcame it, and what we can learn from it. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more amazing content. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have everything you ever wanted? To live in a palace, to wear the finest clothes, to eat the most delicious food, to enjoy the best music and dance, to have the most beautiful wife and son? Well, that was the life of Siddhartha Gautama, the man who would become the Buddha. But he was not happy. He felt that something was missing in his life, something that could not be satisfied by worldly pleasures. Siddhartha was born in Lumbini, near the border of Nepal and India, about 2,600 years ago. He was the son of a chieftain of the Shakya clan, a powerful and wealthy group of people. His father, Suddhodana, wanted him to be a great king and ruler. He gave him everything he could imagine and protected him from anything that could cause him pain or sorrow. He even built three palaces for him, one for each season of the year. But Siddhartha was curious about the world outside his palace walls. He wanted to see what life was like for ordinary people. He asked his father for permission to go on a tour of his kingdom. His father agreed, but he ordered his servants to make sure that Siddhartha would only see pleasant and beautiful things. He did not want him to see any suffering or misery. However, his plan failed. On his tour, Siddhartha saw four sights that changed his life forever. He saw an old man, a sick man, a dead man, and a holy man. He realized that old age, sickness, and death were inevitable for everyone, even for him and his loved ones. He also realized that there was a way to overcome these sufferings by following the path of the holy man, who had renounced worldly pleasures and devoted himself to spiritual practice. Siddhartha was deeply moved by these sights. He decided to leave his palace and family behind and seek the truth for himself. He wanted to find a way to end suffering for himself and all living beings. He wanted to become enlightened. One day, he left his palace and his family to seek the truth. After leaving his palace and family, Siddhartha joined a group of ascetics who practiced severe self-denial and mortification. They believed that by torturing their bodies, they could purify their minds and attain liberation from suffering. Siddhartha followed their teachings and methods with great zeal and determination. He ate very little, sometimes only one grain of rice a day. He wore ragged clothes and slept on the ground. He exposed himself to heat and cold, rain and wind. He endured pain and hunger without flinching. Siddhartha became so thin and weak that he could barely stand or walk. His skin turned black and his hair fell out. His eyes sank into their sockets and his veins bulged out. He looked like a skeleton covered with skin. He was on the verge of death, but he did not give up. He thought that by pushing himself to the limit, he would break through the barrier of ignorance and achieve enlightenment. He followed this path for six years, hoping to attain enlightenment by suppressing his desires and senses. One day, as he was sitting under a tree, he fainted from exhaustion. He had a vision of his past lives, where he had practiced the same kind of extreme asceticism many times before, but without any success. He realized that he was wasting his time and energy on a futile path and he realized that this extreme form of abnegation was not getting him any closer to answering his questions. He saw that it was only another form of attachment, a clinging to the idea of purity and holiness. He understood that he had to find a middle way between indulgence and self-mortification. He also remembered a time when he was a young boy, sitting under a rose apple tree, watching his father plow the field. He had entered a state of natural meditation, where his mind was calm and clear, free from attachment and aversion. He realized that this was the true way to enlightenment, not the way of self-torture. After that, he decided to abandon his extreme asceticism and follow the middle way, 
the path of moderation between indulgence and deprivation. He left his group of ascetics, who were disappointed and disgusted by his change of course. He accepted some food and water from a passing girl named Sujata, who mistook him for a spirit. He regained his strength and vitality. After that he went to a nearby river and bathed himself feeling refreshed and renewed. He then found a suitable spot under a large fig tree, which later became known as the Bodhi tree, the tree of enlightenment. He resolved to sit there until he attained the supreme wisdom and peace. He made a vow that he would not move from his seat until he reached his goal. As he sat under the tree, he entered into deeper and deeper states of meditation and reached the highest state of awakening. He transformed into a perfectly enlightened one, a Buddha. He gained insight into his own past lives and the law of karma and saw how all beings are subject to birth, aging, sickness, death, and rebirth. He understood how suffering is caused by ignorance, craving, and attachment. He realized how to end suffering by eliminating these three aspects and experience the true nature of reality as impermanent, unsatisfactory, and selfless. According to Buddha, ignorance, craving, and attachment are aspects of the mind that cause suffering and keep us trapped in the cycle of rebirth. Ignorance is the lack of understanding of the true nature of reality, such as impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. Craving is the desire for things that we think will make us happy, but actually lead to dissatisfaction. Attachment is the clinging to things that we think are ours, but actually have no inherent existence. By overcoming these three poisons, we can attain liberation from suffering and realize enlightenment. However, his enlightenment was not without obstacles. As he was about to reach the final stage of awakening, he was confronted by Mara, the lord of the senses and the demon of death. Mara was afraid that if the Buddha became enlightened, he would lose his power over him and all other beings. Mara tried to prevent the Buddha from achieving his goal by various means. To trick Buddha, Mara sent a messenger to inform the Buddha that his father had died and that his cousin Devdatta had usurped his throne. He hoped that the Buddha would be moved by grief or anger and abandon his quest. But the Buddha was not affected by this news. He knew that death was inevitable for all beings, and that worldly power was not important for him. He remained focused on his meditation. Next, Mara attacked the Buddha with his army of monstrous creatures. He hoped that the Buddha would be frightened or harmed by their weapons. But the Buddha was not afraid or injured by their assault. He radiated loving-kindness towards them and transformed their weapons into flowers in mid-air. He remained calm and serene. Then, Mara sent his three daughters to tempt the Buddha with their beauty and charm. They were named Desire, Discontent, and Delight. Dot they tried to seduce the Buddha with their words and gestures. They offered him sensual pleasures, worldly happiness, and divine bliss. They promised him love, fame, and power. But the Buddha was not attracted or seduced by their presence. He saw through their illusions and recognized their imperfections. He remained detached and pure. Finally, Mara challenged the Buddha's claim to enlightenment. He asked him who could witness his achievement. He claimed that he himself had more merit than the Buddha because he had practiced generosity, morality, and meditation for a long time. He said that he had many followers who could testify for him then he asked the Buddha who could testify for him. The Buddha did not argue with Mara. He simply touched the earth with his right hand and called upon it to witness his enlightenment. The earth responded by shaking and roaring. The earth goddess rose from the ground and lit a fire with her breath which created a blaze that burned away Mara and his army. The Buddha had triumphed over Mara and all his challenges and temptations. He finally reached the peak of his meditation, where he attained the supreme wisdom and compassion that is enlightenment. He saw through the illusions of Mara and realized his true nature as a Buddha, an awakened one. He understood the causes and effects of all phenomena, past, present, and future. He experienced a great joy and peace that transcended all worldly pleasures and pains. He had overcome all ignorance and craving that bind beings to the cycle of rebirth. He had become free from all suffering. He had become enlightened. The Buddha had attained the supreme enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in Bodhgaya, after overcoming the temptations and attacks of Mara, the lord of illusion and death. 
He had realized the true nature of reality and the way to end suffering. He had become a fully awakened one, a Buddha. But he was not sure if he should share his discovery with others. He thought that his teaching was too subtle and profound for most people to understand. He wondered if anyone would be able to appreciate and follow his path. He felt compassion for all living beings, but he also felt reluctant to teach. Then he heard a voice from the heavens, urging him to teach for the benefit of those who have little dust in their eyes. The voice belonged to Brahma Sahampati, a high god who had witnessed the Buddha's enlightenment. He pleaded with the Buddha to have mercy on the world and to spread his wisdom. The Buddha agreed to teach. He thought of his former companions, the five ascetics who had practiced with him for six years. He knew that they were still seeking the truth and that they had some potential to understand his teaching. He decided to go to them first. He left Bodh Gaya and walked for several days until he reached Sarnath, near Varanasi, where the five ascetics were staying in a deer park. They saw him approaching and recognized him as their former leader. But they were not impressed by his appearance. They thought that he had given up his asceticism and become indulgent. They decided to ignore him and not to greet him or offer him a seat. But as he came closer, they felt a strange attraction and respect for him. They could not help but welcome him and listen to him. He told them that he had found the middle way between indulgence and self-mortification, and that he had attained the supreme enlightenment. He then delivered his first teaching, which is known as the Dhammakaka Pavitana Sutta which means the discourse on setting in motion the wheel of Dhamma. He explained to them the Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering, the truth of its origin, the truth of its cessation, and the truth of the path leading to its cessation. First he explained, the truth of suffering. All conditioned things are subject to suffering, such as birth, aging, sickness, death, separation from what one loves, contact with what one hates, and not getting what one wants. Next he spoke about the truth of the cause of suffering. The root cause of suffering is ignorance, which leads to craving and attachment to impermanent things that cannot satisfy or fulfill us. Then he explained them the truth of the end of suffering. There is a way to end suffering, which is to eliminate ignorance, craving, and attachment, and to realize the true nature of reality as it is. Finally he taught them the truth of the path leading to the end of suffering. The way to end suffering is to follow the Eightfold Path which consists of right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. He established a community of monks and nuns who dedicated their lives to practicing and spreading his teachings. He also encouraged lay people to support the monastic community and practice generosity, morality, and meditation in their daily lives. He became known as the Buddha, the Awakened One, or simply as the Teacher. His teachings became known as the Dharma which means, the Truth or the Law. His community became known as the Sangha which means the Assembly or the Fellowship. Together, they formed the Three Jewels of Buddhism, which are the objects of refuge and devotion for all Buddhists. The Buddha's teachings have been preserved and transmitted by his disciples and followers for over 2,500 years. They have been recorded in various languages and scriptures, such as Pali, Sanskrit, Tibetan, Chinese, Japanese, etc. They have also been explained and developed by various schools and traditions, such as Theravada, Mahayana, Vajrayana, Zen, Pure Land, etc. They have spread to different continents and regions, such as Asia, Africa, Europe, America, Australia, etc. They have also interacted and been interacted with by other religions and philosophies, such as Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism, Taoism, Confucianism, Shintoism, etc. They have also reached the West and other parts of the world in modern times. He concluded his teaching by saying, This is the noble truth of suffering. This is its origin. This is its cessation. This is the way leading to its cessation. This is how far I have seen. This is how far I have understood. This is how far I have penetrated. This is how far I have realized. As he spoke these words, one of the five ascetics, named Khandana, understood his meaning and attained the first stage of enlightenment. He exclaimed, whatever is subject to origination is also subject to cessation. The Buddha acknowledged his insight. 
The Buddha set in motion the wheel of Dhamma, which has been rolling ever since and continued to teach for 45 years in various places in India. He attracted many people from different backgrounds and walks of life and taught them according to their needs and capacities. The Buddha's teachings are still relevant and applicable today and offer a rational and practical way of understanding and transforming oneself and the world. They address the universal problems of suffering and happiness that all human beings face and provide a path of wisdom and compassion that can lead to peace and harmony. They inspire and empower people to live a meaningful and fulfilling life and are a source of hope and joy for millions of people across the world. The Buddha was not only a great teacher, but also a great healer. He had a deep compassion for all living beings, wanting them to be free from suffering and its causes. He saw that the root of suffering was ignorance, the mistaken view of reality that leads to attachment, aversion, and delusion. He also saw that the antidote to ignorance was wisdom, the clear and correct understanding of reality that leads to liberation and enlightenment. The Buddha taught that wisdom and compassion are inseparable and interdependent. Wisdom without compassion is cold and dry, while compassion without wisdom is blind and sentimental. Only by cultivating both wisdom and compassion can one attain the perfect state of Buddhahood, which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. The Buddha's compassion was not limited to humans, but extended to all sentient beings, including animals, insects, spirits, gods, and even his enemies and respected all forms of life and advocated non-violence and kindness. He taught that all living beings have the potential to become Buddhas, and that they are all interconnected and interdependent urging his followers to practice loving, kindness, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity towards all living beings without discrimination. The Buddha knew that his life was coming to an end. He had spent 45 years teaching the Dhamma, the universal truth that can liberate anyone who follows it. He decided to spend his last days in a small town called Kuzanara, where he lay down between two sal trees and was surrounded by a large group of his disciples, who were sad and anxious about losing their teacher. He comforted them and gave them his final instructions. He said, all conditioned things are impermanent. Strive on with diligence. He then entered into a series of meditative absorptions, going from the highest to the lowest and then back to the highest again. He finally reached the state of parinirvana, the ultimate cessation of all mental and physical processes. He passed away peacefully at the age of 80. His death was not the end of his legacy, but the beginning of a new era. His teachings spread far and wide, reaching different regions and cultures. His life story became a source of inspiration and devotion for millions of people. His relics were distributed and enshrined in stupas, which became important pilgrimage sites. His followers developed various schools and traditions of Buddhism, each with its own interpretation and emphasis on different aspects of his teachings. They also produced a vast literature of scriptures, commentaries, treatises, and stories. They engaged in debates, dialogues, and exchanges with other religious and philosophical systems. His influence extended beyond Buddhism, affecting the fields of art, literature, ethics, psychology, science, and more. His message of peace, compassion, wisdom, and liberation resonated with people from all walks of life. He became one of the most revered and respected figures in human history. To conclude, the Buddha was a remarkable person who left a lasting impact on Buddhism and humanity. He taught us how to overcome suffering and attain happiness, how to cultivate wisdom and compassion, and how to live in harmony with ourselves and others. He showed us the way to enlightenment, the ultimate goal of human existence. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more interesting content. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.